Open Rights Group have invited some of the involved personalities to give their opinions about the data protection regulation. Nick Stringer, the Director of Regulatory Affairs of the Internet Advertising Bureau. The Internet Advertising Bureau, IAB, is the UK mm. industry body for digital interactive advertising. So we represent over 800 businesses, big and small, engaged in digital marketing. Member of European Parliament from the Greens, Jean-Philippe Albrecht, uh, I'm the one who has to bring together all the different views uh, into the changes to the Commission proposal. The Executive Director of Center of Digital Democracy in the United States, Jeffrey Chester. The strongest possible EU law will put pressure on the United States to finally address its terrible record protecting privacy of American citizens. Do the current proposals do a good job of balancing the interests of business and consumers? Getting this balance right is not about watering down data protection rights for consumers, as some have suggested, but actually developing a risk-based approach that affords strong safeguards for consumers, but allowing for technological innovation. And I'll give you an example. In the Netherlands recently, uh, it agreed to, its government agreed to change its prior explicit consent approach for cookies and other technologies, which is transposing the revised e-privacy directive. And it did so because it failed to get the balance right. It was too onerous on businesses and it irritated consumers, for example, via the, via the deployment of cookie, cookie walls. So when I say it, it potentially uh, sets the sector back, it's doing that because it's not getting that balance right. I don't think that this is true because um, when we think about the innovation and the growth potential in the digital market, then I think it will only be there if we have uh, offers and services which people can really trust in. We need to have a single uh, competition area for everybody. And at the moment, it's the way that European companies are disadvantaged in competition because they respect the European data protection rules while other companies coming from the outside, especially from Silicon Valley, they don't have these privacy rules there and uh, they have an advantage in competition towards uh, European uh, companies. One of the things that we've been watching at my NGO is the growing role of U.S. companies in the European Union. Many U.S. companies have bought European companies to operate at very advanced data collection networks in France and Germany and the U.K. and elsewhere. Uh, the, the very techniques that have been created here in the United States that called online ad auctions that sell off access to you as an individual to, to unseen advertisers in 20 milliseconds, you are put up for auction when you're in front of a PC or even using your mobile phone. The member of European Parliament of the People's Party Group, Axel Boss. For my political group, the EPP group, the shadow rapporteur in the leading committee, in the so-called Lever Committee, and uh, therefore I'm the one of these seven persons who are dealing mainly in this issue. The consumer rights advocate Anna Fielder. You are interviewing me in my role as a trustee board director of Privacy International. I also uh, represent them on all the consumer uh, and privacy rights related issues. The two sides are you know, uh, two sides of the same coin. You cannot have big companies without the consumers and citizens. And, and you know, in our view, it is in the interest of these companies to have maximum trust of the people that use their services. If you're looking to the further um, technological developments, uh, then you have to be careful with um, everything what you are now regulating regarding the um, more freely uh, floating data and that's why we, we have to think about what's the right balance. And this means on the one hand we have to create stronger rights for the individual but leaving 
for the economic participants the possibility to handle or to um, to, to have business models with data. There were a lot of views from uh, industry in particular that the balance wasn't right because the administrative burden on companies is far too big. Um, we actually don't believe it is. Um, I think if you want harmonised legislation across 27 countries to have a degree of prescription, mm. otherwise the harmonisation goes. We don't think the current drafting uh, achieves this and risks severely restricting the use of data and denying, for example, small businesses and retailers the revenue to support, drive and develop their activities. The, the main administrative burdens that are being attacked are usually to do with a with a rights data subject or you know people's rights to uh, mm -hmm. access to their information to deletion mm -hmm. portability and so on so by very often if you look very carefully uh, if you follow all the advice that in removing the administrative burdens you will also end up being left without many rights as well. A massive lobbying effort has produced over 3,000 amendments. When we were in Brussels recently, mm -hmm. a group of US uh, consumer and civil liberties NGOs, we met with MEPs from all the political mm -hmm. parties, and they all said the same thing. They had never seen any kind of lobbying like this before. At first, I would say it is very necessary that we have this contact and we are asking also for this contact in the whole um, society. Otherwise, probably we would regulate something and uh, with sometimes no reality check. Look, it's, it's not a fair fight. You're talking about companies like uh, Google and Facebook that have unlimited resources um, that in fact, uh, you know, base their headquarters in, in countries like Ireland, uh, which, where they can have a greater in, in influence. The IB thinks it's actually incorrect to position this debate about citizens groups mm -hmm. versus big business. A lot of the debate is all about large multinational companies, but it's not just about these players. And it actually threatens to overlook some of the very real issues of concerns here, such as the potential impact on innovation and entrepreneurialism uh, as well. And just to end my answer to that question, I mm -hmm. wanted to quote Irish MEP Sean Kelly, because he summed it up very well recently when he commented, being pro-business is being pro-consumer. The two are not mutually exclusive. We don't have full transparency. There's no a mandatory uh, lobbying register, for example. Uh, and uh, members of the European Parliament, they don't show whom they meet and from whom they are inspired when drafting amendments, for example. And I think that this should be enforced. And that's why mm -hmm. I have uh, put, for example, all the lobby groups on my website, which I met throughout the last year as rapporteur for this data protection regulation, which is around 170 and... Uh, around 90% of it have been uh, business interests. Seeing now in the whole discussion is the um, lobby plaque mm. issues. Uh, that's a little bit, um, I, I think, too far going sometimes in what this means, um, that we are not able as a member of parliament thinking in, in uh, solutions. And uh, sometimes if you're convinced to solve a problem, in the in the um, text of law, then um, of course probably you meet also the interests of a stakeholder. One thing everyone agrees is that consistent laws are needed across Europe. Everyone except the UK government. You also agree with the kind of three fundamental principles of the draft regulation. So first and foremost a need to provide European citizens, citizens with strong level of data protection and accountability. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, a need to update the law in light of the techno technological changes since 1995. Data usage and exchange is widespread in the digital world mm -hmm. and that underpins the internet, business models and, and the majority of services that we, that we depend on, including public services. And okay. thirdly, 
the need to streamline the rules across markets. There are so different rules across Europe still, uh, while the internet environment and the digital environment is uh, by nature cross-border. And by nature, uh, most of our personal data today uh, are not processed in our own country, uh, but uh, for example in Ireland, where Facebook and Google are situated. Most of the data collection practices and many of the businesses are really U.S. businesses. When you look at who is setting the global standard for invasion of privacy of, of all of us, it's Google and Facebook uh, and Yahoo. Harmonizing data protection regulation across Europe, mm. it's also not, not, not just something that the civil rights organizations are asking for, but something that uh, business has wanted to achieve for a very long time. I think this is a critical moment for the future of privacy and whatever is done in the EU will determine the, the, the future of, of uh, privacy as a right for the rest of the world.